Hello, my name's Derek. I'm a web developer, and this is continuing our series on building a website from scratch. And what we're going to do is set up the build environment for for the asset, our style sheets, images, and JavaScript. So let's make a start. Uh, first thing to do is bring up the project. Here's one I've prepared earlier. So what we're doing is I'm using my Docker compose file in Laradoc to bring bring up all the various containers Apache, MySQL, PHP My Admin, and the workspace to do all the um, artisan and all that kind of stuff. And just wait for that to build, boot up, and we should be good to go. Here we go. As you can see, we're currently unable to connect. So let's um, see if this makes a difference now. There we go. Back ends there, and so is the front end. Excellent. We have a very ugly and plain site here, so time to sort of um, pretty it up a bit. A couple of things I want to um, look at first before we go down that path is just a philosophy of design. <coughs> this um, book by Brad Frost on atomic design is definitely um, worth reading. I encourage you to have a, have, have a read of it. Basically what he wants you to do is rather than sort of thinking about individual pages is think about them as a um, series of components and that way you can sort of build up um, effective pattern libraries and things. Uh, I'm not going to go qu quite into the whole atomic design sort of approach, but I, I do sort of have that in the back of my head when I'm building things. But um, what I do tend to use is the SAS 7.1 pattern. It's all in the SAS documentation, so sas-guidelines.es and the seven, 7 to 1 pattern is basically you have 7 folders boiling down to one CSS file and how it's divided up, we've got base, components, layout, pages, themes, abstracts and vendors. I usually use a variation thereof um, and and that way you can sort of keep keep things nice and organized and I also find it's quite useful because um, you end up building up your own library of, of little CSS um, goodies and you can sort of incorporate them into other projects and saves you a bit of time and of course on github there is a um, repository where you can grab all this. Kitty Gerardel, uh, is that how you pronounce it? You can tell I can't speak French. Um, has, has a little thing here. So I'm just going to grab grab their code and use that as as the, um, the basis for our project. Moving to our inside our theme so themes acme and assets we need to create a folder for css so let's do that in our assets folder we need another one for images and so we've got assets images and we need one for javascript So there we have it, assets, CSS, images and JavaScript. We should also create a, another folder called resources and in the resources uh, where I'm going to put all my um, source files and so resources will need same deal, CSS, images, 
is. And JavaScript. The next thing I'm going to do is grab those files that I've um, extracted earlier and drop them into the resources folder. So, so and in there. There we go. Alright, I just realised I'm not going to need CSS because it's going to be SAS, isn't it? So let's just. Um, Delete that one, and I'm going to change that name to SAS. Let's jump into here, and I'm going to change this file to style. You don't have to do this, this is um, just a convention I follow. Okay, a quick look at what's here and look at the styles.sass. You'll see here there's a whole lot of um, imports, so import abstracts, functions, import normalize, and so, so everything here is all sort of important. Of course, that corresponds with the folders here. In abstracts, we have all our um, things like variables, mixins, you know base functions and things that can be used across the, the whole project. Then we move into base, which is all our um, base um, elements that we can, that we can change around, you know, fonts, um, you know, various sort of HTML selectors. Then we can move into components, that's where we start sort of building out things like our, our, our buttons, Layout, of course, is, as it says, layout. Then we've got um, pages, set up styles for individual pages. And themes. Themes can be useful if you're having different color schemes. An example of that might be uh, having a, a light scheme and a dark scheme. And vendors, of course, that, that's where all the third party libraries and things sort of end up. And of course, all that's not going to do much unless you've got something to, you know, build script to work with. So I tend to use Gulp, and I've got a file here that this is kind of my, my go-to Gulp for for all sorts of um, projects, and I tend to change it around depending depending on the project. And you can sort of see here the way it sort of works. It sets up. We've got got some variables. So we've got a gulp, so it's requiring gulp to be plugged in. Some concatenation, CSS Nano for minimize minifying um, CSS, um, ImageMin for compressing images. I'll use um, M MQ Packer, which is a media query packer. It's um, Unfortunately, it's dead at the moment. Uh, no, been no, it's no active development for quite a while, but I haven't found any alternative to that. Um, post CSS to do some processing of the CSS, renaming files with Gulp rename, and SAS. So using Gulp Dart SAS to, to do that. Of course, source maps are quite useful to sort of see where things are and. Tursa for playing around with the JavaScript files. Another variable I set up in here is paths. So we have um, so there's, I set these up as an object. So we've got um, paths which use um, styles. So these so we've got source and destination. So this is going to be the um, the source of the of the style, so the, the SAS files, and you'll see here they live in the um, themes, Acme, resources, SAS, and then we're looking for anything with an extension of SCSS, and we're also looking for anything in a subdirectory of that with an extension of SCSS. 
um, that's going to be compiled to assets SCSSO. You can change all these to what, whatever you like. Same deal with scripts and also do the same thing with, with images. Then we move on to our various functions. So this is the style function. So this is going to grab the CSS or the SAS and turn it into CSS. And so what it's doing is grabbing the the, the styles from the from that um, path source object. It's now it's piping that to a source source map. Then it's then it's running the the SAS function. And of course, if there's an error, it's going to log it. Then once it's done that, it's going to move move the the process stuff into post CSS, and so the, the media query packer will sort of extract everything and try and sort of put all the media queries together. We can add auto prefixer, um, whether auto prefix is needed or not, so another story. And CSS nano for compressing the CSS down. Then write the source maps and then of course yeah send this through to the paths um, styles destination so that'll be the asset css folder um, we've got another function that deals with images and we've got you know with the source of the images from the images source object that then pipes that in, into image min function which works on gif JPEGs, um, PNGs, and, and also SVG files. And if you go into the ImageMin documentation uh, on, on its um, project page, you'll find a whole lot of information on how to change how to change things up. I've, I've got it pretty much set to the um, to the defaults here. And then of course, you know, transpile can concatenate and minify you know, our scripts. Um, yeah, our scripts path. We're, we're, we're looking at um, concatenating a file called scripts.js. Rename that as you know, and, and minify that. Then pipe that into a um, terse, and you can sort of set up the terse for all sorts of all sorts of different things. So it um, you can you can make it transpile into into various forms of um, of ECMAScript, you know, whether you want ECMA five or twenty fifteen or yeah, you know, depending on what browsers you're supporting. And of course that all goes to the destinations. And we have here the watch the watch function and what it's doing is it's watching the just the paths and in, in the in the styles at the moment and um, it'll execute the, the style function. Another function I've got here is what I call vendor and what it does is it just copies the files from the you know, from the node modules directory in, into the project and in this case we've, we've got um, jQuery because um, Winter is dependent on jQuery to, ru to run the Ajax and we need to have that have that sitting there, and that goes into a um, folder, into an inside the theme for assets, vendor, and jQuery, and sort of ret returns all that. Then down here, we're we're defining these as um, export functions, and then we've got the the build build function, which in parallel will um, run the the style and and also the the watch function. And then, then we've got um, the default task, which which is build. So that's a quick flyover as to what the gulp file does. And of course, if we run gulp style, we're going to get errors. Why? Because we haven't installed the appropriate packages. Moving back to our gulp file, the ones that are in colour, glorious technicolour, are the ones that we're going to install. I'll drop over to terminal and I'm just going to use my um, my preferred package manager which is yarn and I'm going to add all these, um, all these different styles and things. So let's hit return. OK, 
Uh, I've just cut out about 30 seconds of all this running and what you end up with the, these files being installed. Next thing to do is see what happens when we run our gulp style script. I've got some errors. Oh, gulp dart sass. I must have forgotten to add that. So just bear with me and I'll. Um, here we go. Um, let's try again. <laughs> Spot a nice typo there. <laughs> Auto prefix is not defined. Here's our culprit. Let's try again. Cannot find module auto prefixer. Had another error saying that post CSS was missing, so I've added that. And we've run um, gulp style, and so far so good. Yep, no, no errors. That's what. That's always a good thing. And if all's gone well, we should have a have a style CSS in our um, assets folder. Look at that. It's a bit minified. I've got the CSS. What I might do, just to sort of make things a bit more readable, is go down to here and just um, comment out CSS Nano for the time being. And I'll just duck back over to the just rerun that build script and there we go we can actually it's sort of nice to be able to sort of see what we're doing okay let's have a look and see if this has changed the look of our site look at that yep seems to be working that's still, that's just gone to a different kind of ugly, but we know it's working. And that's where we'll leave it. Um, we've set up the basics of a gulp build, and um, that'll sort of set us in, in good stead for the rest of the project. Next time I'll look at um, the layout. So thank you for watching, hope you've got something out of it, and like, subscribe, and comment if you so desire, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.